I guess we'll basically just start off sort of with the fact that you've had such a personal experience with cancer at such a young age and just sort of go through the background of how you discovered it and what happened right up until you found out you actually had cancer. Well, I, I, I caught um, my cancer um, at the age of 23, uh, two weeks before I was going to New Zealand. Uh, it came with a huge shock to my family. And uh, I was actually went in for an ultrasound appointment by myself and we just thinking it was a cyst, but uh, it turned out that it was cancerous. Uh, so, yeah, and then I, after that, we went to see a, a surgeon, and then um, that's when we actually found out that it was cancer, and that is, my testicle was going to have to be removed. So we removed the testicle, and then uh, three weeks later, I found out that cancer had spread into my lymph node. So then I'd have to actually undertake chemotherapy. And uh, the chemo experience um, was just, uh, it was surreal. I did not know what to think going in. I was super energetic going into it and thinking I could conquer it. And then um, got in there, met people that were bald, that were sick, not feeling well, um, going to the bathroom all the time. And... Here's me, a healthy guy, feeling amazing. And then, you know, you see all this, and you're like, this is what's going to happen to me? And it just, it's a, it's just, it's just a surreal experience. My first day at chemo, um, came home, ran around with my dog, ate some food, had a nap, and then uh, woke up and threw up for a solid two months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, not the best experience. <laughs> no, I can imagine. So going in there, you were all pumped up and everything. Did it Did it kind of take sort of the wind out of your sails, seeing all these people and kind of thinking, oh, this is going to be me? Uh, big time. I, I did not expect it at all. Uh, uh, yeah, it just, you feel like you can take it and do it, and then all of a sudden you see all these people. But the best part was when you saw someone that was finishing chemo. And then you see that they're still alive. And then they have all these dreams and they'll say things they're going to do after. And then that is what you look forward to. Oh, so kind of light at the end of the tunnel there. Oh, it was amazing to see someone that actually went through it. And uh, a guy came over one time and he had leaf tickets that he gave me. And he actually went through chemo uh, the year before. And I saw him, he was over and he had hair. He was looking good. He was strong. And uh, it, was, it was really good to see that. And that was just like an act of kindness that you see from like people that have gone through chemo. It's like it was a nice camaraderie amongst uh, all the people that are in it. Uh, it you, you develop, you get in the community of uh, all the cancer patients. It's really nice. So what was the... Um... What was the hardest part of the overall treatments? Was it the actual, the, the chemo itself, or was it just kind of the uncertainty of what the next day is going to hold for you? What was the hardest part going through it all? Um, it's really tough. The hardest part, I'd say, is a combination of um, seeing my friends doing stuff. Like, they could go out, and they could party, and they could have fun. And then I was left behind, sitting at home, no longer going to New Zealand, you know, I had put my life on hold. And also another thing was the unknown. Uh, you know, like, like, am I going to die? Those questions run through your mind. And, like, you just, you, like, there's a lot of uncertainty in the entire thing. And that is what is really scary in itself. And also thinking, is the chemo going to kill me or is the cancer? <laughs> because I never really found signs of the cancer hurting me. It was the chemo, the treatment. So you're just like, ah, am I going to survive this? Uh, now, you're, you're cancer-free, correct? Yes, as of two weeks ago. Is there a threat of it coming back, or should you be in the clear, essentially? Um, there, uh, you know, there, there's, there's a percentage that I will get it more than another person. Mm -hmm. um, it would be, if anything, it would be leukemia or um, I have a higher risk of getting uh, testicular cancer in my other testicle. So you just kind of have to be, you're in the higher percentile of the risk group essentially now. 
Yeah, but mm-hmm. like uh, if I keep up with my appointments and if you you know if you just you know trust your body, you're good to go. Like just trust your body and then you'll be fine. You can get through it no problem. Like just. It's catching it early, which is very important, I find. Well, they always, yeah, they always preach the early detection is is the key and everything. And it's yeah. just, I think a lot of people, especially somebody in your shoes, being early 20s, just you think it, it's never going to happen to me. Like, was oh, no. was that just a kick in the face almost when you found out I'm in my 20s and now I've got I've got this cancer? Yeah, well, funny thing is with our family is that I, I'm a huge Superman fan. <laughs> and uh, when we were in Mexico, when I actually found out like there was a lump and there's something wrong, and uh, we were always laughing because we always just said I had a case of kryptonite in my testicle, but we just thought it was a cyst and like it was nothing big. But it was just funny that we actually, you know, you do think you're invincible at like, at such a young age, and you don't think you're going to get anything. I never get sick, like. I've never broke a bone in my body, but I get cancer. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's insane. Now, I was looking at, uh, actually, while you were doing some of the treatments, I kept up, I have you on Facebook, and I was kind of following through some of the stuff, and I noticed you have, uh, you did sort of a, a, a blog, essentially, on that youngadultcancer.ca website. Did yes. you find that that actually, was that something that really helped you kind of go through it, either just to put down your thoughts and feelings into words? Was it something that was very beneficial to do for you? Um, I think altogether, social media, uh, just, it was a huge help. Uh, it was a way to vent, uh, let it out, and also have people contact me that were going through it, or just friends and family offering support, like, um, the whole social media experience, that website, Young Adult Cancer, um, and, uh, just, like, Facebook, and also, like, the Relay for Life, uh, it just, that stuff helps you get through it. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of the Relay for Life, uh, we're both involved in the Soggy Shores one, but I actually looked up on the Relay website yesterday and saw your team and how much you guys have raised something. When when I checked, it was over 16 grand. Yes. That is absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's all I've been doing. And the funny thing is I did that with an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> and sitting in a chemo chair all day, just writing friends, making a team and uh, sending out emails. It was all done through Facebook. That's awesome. And um, are you speaking at the Relay for Life at Talking Shores? Um, I think I'll be speaking in the opening ceremonies, uh, just sharing my experience, my uh, throat chemo and everything, diagnosis. And uh, it will be a quick like five minutes speech, I think. Especially for younger people, what advice would you have in general for people who are dealing with cancer, going through the treatments, things like that? What advice do you have from your experience to kind of help them through it? What helped you and what you could tell them to try and help them through their experiences as well? I would say basically wear your heart on your sleeve. Uh, Don't shelter yourself because you're sick or you're going through something very debilitating. Let people in, because if you let people in, they'll want to help you. So always just wear your heart on your sleeve and know that this is just a little bump in the road and you're going to get through it. Uh, so what's up next for you now that you're cancer-free as of a couple of weeks ago? You've got the Relay for Life coming up, but uh, are you rescheduling your trip for New Zealand or what are you, what are yeah. you up to now? I'm going to New Zealand uh, in February with my uh, friend. And uh, we'll be going there for a year for Teachers College. And uh, throughout the time while I'm waiting to go there, I think I'm just going to be going to school and uh, talking to um, health classes, male health classes, about um, empathy. And if anyone gets cancer, what you can do to help. Um, Don't be scared to approach them. Uh, People are very scared of cancer, and that's why I like to let kids know that there's nothing to be afraid of. You can just, you know, they're your friends. You can be comfortable with them, go talk to them, make them feel better about themselves. So empathy is a huge thing for that I like to relay to kids. Excellent. Well, look forward to seeing you at the Relay for Life. Maybe I can, my team can raise a little bit more money and hopefully get somewhere near you. <laughs> I'm hoping to hit, we're hoping to hit 20. 
because my sister and I, we have we have a team. She has a team as well, and it's balls team balls to cancer team two. Um, and she has like two thousand. So I'm thinking combined, we could hit like twenty 